Lily Reinhart, Chloe Grace Moretz, Reese Witherspoon, these are just a few of the celebrities that have called out the Kardashians. The Kardashians are getting hate in the public eye yet again. Here are some celebrities who publicly exposed the Kardashians. Kim admitted that in order to fit into the iconic Marilyn Monroe dress, she had to do a crash diet to lose 15 pounds. According to CNN, Lily Reinhart actively voiced her opinion on the matter. To openly admit to starving yourself for the sake of the Met Gala, she announced on her Instagram story, when you know very well there are millions of young men and women that are looking up to you and listening to your every word, the ignorance is otherworldly and disgusting. I do feel like success is the best revenge. Although she didn't explicitly mention Kim's name, she didn't deny the multiple headlines she made and even got accused of wanting attention. In March 2016, Kim shook the internet with an edgy mirror selfie fully unclothed. Chloe Grace Moretz was quick to comment on the Twitter post saying, I truly hope you realize how important setting goals are for young women, teaching them we have so much more to offer than just our bodies. Kim clapped back with a sassy response saying, let's all welcome Chloe G. Moretz to Twitter since no one knows who she is. Your nylon cover is cute, boo. Ouch. In an interview, Ray J, the ex-boyfriend of Kim, who was said to have released their infamous tape, claimed that he never did such a thing. I've sat in the shadows for over 14 years, allowing the Kardashians to use my name, make billions of dollars over a decade and a half, talking about a topic I've never really spoken about, he told British tabloids. I'm just not gonna sit here and not defend myself and defend my truth. I have never leaked a tape in my life. It has never been a leak, he added. All of this is a lie, shaking my head. This needs to stop. I also have kids. The Kardashians are known for having a reality show that brings attention to their family. Janice Dickinson once told Raider Online in 2013 that I have a real family. I raise my children with values, she added. When I heard that the Kardashians called themselves the first family of reality television, I threw up. According to TMZ, Reese Witherspoon slammed Kim over a decade ago when she was accepting the Generation Award at the 2011 MTV Movie Awards. I get it. Girls, that it's cool to be a bad girl, she said. But it is possible to make it in Hollywood without doing a reality show. When I came up in this business, if you made an inappropriate tape, you were embarrassed and you hid it under your bed. Even the former president of the United States, Barack Obama, had something to say about the famous family. In an interview with Amazon, he commented on the toxicity of today's pop culture. There was not that window into the lifestyles of the rich and famous. Kids weren't monitoring every day what Kim Kardashian was wearing, where Kanye West was going on vacation, and thinking that somehow was the mark of success. He went on to remark in his own childhood, I don't think people went around saying to themselves, I need to have a $10,000 square foot house. We weren't exposed to things we didn't have in the same way kids these days are. According to US Magazine, he previously had been quoted by Michelle saying he prefers for his kids not to watch the Kardashians. Kendall Jenner's Pepsi ad was one of the most wildly criticized commercials of all time. It was accused of attempting to take advantage of the BLM movement. It got so much condemnation that according to NBC News, the drink company had to remove it. Out of the many, many comments, here's one from Jude Apatow on Twitter who slammed it. I could spend the rest of my life trying and not even come close to making something as funny as this Pepsi ad. The daughter of late Michael Jackson had something to say when Kendall and Kylie released t-shirts that cropped the faces of musical legends, Notorious B.I.G., Tupac Shakur, The Doors, Ozzy Osbourne. She wrote, as a huge fan of Zeppelin, the Doors, Floyd, I mean these bands literally helped me shape who I am today. I can't condone this fashion. She also went on to explain these legends should be respected and honored. With her dad being the king of pop, it only makes sense why she would feel this way. John Hamm is one of the many critics who have shunned the Kardashians. He told Elle, whether it's Paris Hilton or Kim Kardashian or whoever, stupidity is certainly celebrated. Being an effing idiot is a valuable commodity in this culture because you're rewarded significantly. It's celebrated. It doesn't make sense to me. Pink is known as being a woman's rights activist and she shaded the Kardashians at some point. Referencing the same selfie criticized by Chloe, Pink took to Twitter to make some criticisms of her own, as reported by People. Shout out to all of the women across the world using their brains, their strength, their work ethic, their talent, their magic that they were born with that only they possess, she wrote. It may not ever bring you as much attention or banknotes as using your body but women like you don't need that kind of attention. She confirmed in a chat with the host on Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen that the tweet was indeed a dig at Kim's pick. When Kylie Jenner posed with cornrows in 2015 with the caption, I woke up like this, it certainly raised some eyebrows and some outrage. Amanda Stenberg, who shares a pal, Jaden Smith with Kylie commented, when you appropriate black features and culture, but fail to use your position of power to help black Americans by directing your attention towards wigs instead of 
blank blank. I can't finish the quote due to the risk of getting flagged. Hashtag white girls do it better. According to the shade room, Kylie clapped back with, mad if I do, mad if I don't. Go hang with Jaden or something. It appears that Amy Schumer didn't used to like the Kardashians. In 2015 Saturday Night Live, she criticized the girls for their excessive plastic surgery. Is that a great message for little girls? A whole family of women who take faces they, they were born as like a light suggestion. Some shady business deals, perhaps hard work and dedication. There's many different theories as to how the Kardashians got famous. Let's cover what the real reasons are. Robert Kardashian became a famous lawyer. Robert Kardashian, the father of Kim, Courtney, and Khloe, gained notoriety in the 1990s as a well-known lawyer and close friend of American football player OJ Simpson. He was extremely well off and made enough money to provide a pleasant life for his family as well as support them as they became well known. The OJ trial shed some light on the family. The Kardashian name became well recognized when Robert was assigned to OJ's defense team when he was charged with ending his wife Nicole. The family was divided by Robert's tactics during the trial because his wife, Kris Jenner, was close to Nicole and firmly believed that OJ was guilty. Nevertheless, the family overcame their disagreements and had a joyful and healthy bond until Robert's esophageal cancer demise in 2003. Chris married Bruce Jenner. Chris and Robert got divorced shortly after, and in 1991, the well-known mother wedded Olympian star Bruce Jenner, who is now Caitlyn Jenner. Bruce Jenner had four kids of his own. Given that Bruce had his own riches and status to his name, this marriage contributed to the family's ascent to fame. Bruce and Chris expanded their family even further by having Kendall and Kylie, two stunning daughters of their own. Kim partied with Paris Hilton. Kim Kardashian's relationship with Paris Hilton helped her rise to fame. She briefly came to our attention in 2003 when she showed up on The Simple Life as Paris Hilton's helper. She was well known for her ability to organize her wardrobe. Kim established her reputation as Paris's pretty brunette friend at this time, when she was photographed having fun with the latter. After that, she began arranging and dressing other well-known celebrities, and eventually things turned around and she became one herself. Kim's tape leaked to the public. What has made the Kardashians well-known? There are many who contend that the family's true and genuine ascent to fame was facilitated by Kim's adult tape. Uncomfortable as it may be, her family appears to have a lot to be grateful for. It's possible that Kim's well-known tape featuring her ex boyfriend Ray J is what first made her famous. After this strange video was leaked online in 2007, it became a pop culture sensation and Kim received a settlement of $5 million. Not bad for a video leak in a failed relationship. The Dash store opened. Kim, Courtney, and Chloe, who have a strong love for fashion, founded Dash, a clothes boutique in 2006, which raised their social standing. As they gained notoriety, their store gained even more traction and was the focus of an E spin-off program called Dash Dolls in which young girls competed to impress the Kardashian ladies by showcasing their customer service abilities on air. And then Keeping Up With The Kardashians aired. You may probably watch a replay of Keeping Up With The Kardashians on E! if you're curious about how the Kardashian family became well known. The first episode of Keeping Up With The Kardashians debuted on E! in 2007 following Kris Jenner's proposition to Ryan Seacrest about filming a reality TV series. According to rumors, the purpose of the show was to present Kim in a positive light after her controversial video was was made public. While some thought the D-list reality program would eventually wind down, we grew dependent on watching the highs and lows of the Kardashian family season after season. After 20 seasons, this crazy family rose to international fame. Kim made famous appearances. The reality TV series still gave the Kardashian kids a lot of opportunities, even if some people said they were only famous for being famous. Chris never passed up one of these chances. Kim accepted the chance to participate in Dancing with the Stars, despite the fact that she is well known for having terrible dance moves, which helped her rise to even greater fame in the entertainment industry. Soon after, Kim began receiving more attention from the modeling and adult magazine industries after starring in the first of several contentious photo shoots for Playboy magazine. Kim had a 72-day marriage. The Kardashians' as well-publicized romances have undoubtedly maintained their elevated status. In fact, Kim's 72-day union with NBA player Chris Humphreys played a significant role in the Kardashians' ascent to stardom. Her widely broadcast wedding was a two-part event that brought in millions of viewers and had a unique conclusion. Numerous detractors asserted that this was just another attempt at celebrity status, but the Kardashian sisters quickly refuted the claims, claiming that Kim would have chosen someone far more famous if it meant making the first page. Youch. Kim married Kanye West. 
After her divorce, Kim fell head over heels for rapper and genre-defining artist Kanye West, who had been after her for some time. Their glamorous wedding, well-publicized engagement, and pregnancy announcements elevated the newly formed power couple to a new social standing and fundamentally altered public perceptions of Kim. We can safely say that Kim's marriage to Kanye helped her become more well-known. Kim, who has since been divorced, acknowledges that during their marriage, she was treated with a different level of respect. Social media, you know, when you think about it, most of us, I mean, Kendall and Kylie kind of grew up with it, but the rest of us did not. The Kardashians have resorted into buying fake followers on social media due to the fact that they are boring fans so badly and their brand's accounts are shelling out low performing engagement levels with followers. Are the Kardashians about to spiral out of control? Absolutely. I think it's a completely different world. Kim & Co's online popularity is rarely questioned, but an analysis of their clothing and beauty brands revealed a remarkably low connection with fans. Fans do not care and their brands are suffering. Celebrities with over 1 million Instagram followers are expected to have engagement levels between 1 and 5%, according to an analysis done by the US Sun. However, virtually all of the Kardashians' brands are way off the mark. Chloe's Good American clothing range has an engagement level of just 0.02 from 2.4 million followers. More than a few hundred people rarely like any of the profile's posts. Are people just not into the clothing anymore, or are they just bored of the Kardashians? What do you guys think? You know, does it scare me a little bit? Kim's skim clothing range and her skin cosmetics line don't fare much better. With an engagement of 0.09 and 0.05, the company's posts have been getting a few thousand likes, but with their accounts, they have 6 million and 5.7 million followers. That's a drop in the ocean. While Chris's homeware brand, Get Safely, has 150,000 followers and an engagement rate of only 0.08%, the number of likes rarely hit triple figures. Courtney's well-being firm, Poosh, is better than the others, but still relatively low engagement of 0.15%. So I felt like timing is everything. Kylie's toddler clothing range, Kylie Baby, has an engagement level of just 0.18%. Only her clothing brand, Kai, performs at a high level of 15 engagement. Figures compiled by Phalanx Anetics had further bad news for the Kardashians, suggesting that their fans aren't listening online. 47% of good American followers are not engaging, and only 50% are real, the analysis showed. Just three quarters of Kim's skin followers are real, and 22% are fake followers. It's so important when you're building your brand. Yusuf Awadallah, who is an FTD news host and hip hop artist, says, I think the Kardashians will do anything to stay relevant, even if that means stooping so low to buy followers for their social media accounts. At the end of the day, they probably don't even run their social media, it's probably someone behind the scenes. My favorite Kardashian used to be Kylie, but then she broke up with Travis Scott. So now I have no favorites. That's fair. A lot of people feel this way about the Kardashians. I personally think it's kind of cool that they could just ride the wave of their reality TV show, but they choose to run businesses of their own. They all live pretty interesting lives. They work hard. They look good. Coralie Trigger was scathing in her assessment of the Kardashian family, telling the US Sun it's a safe bet that the Kardashians use Botox for their bodies and bots for their brands. Believing the Kardashian brands on social media have grown without any help from bots is like believing the Kardashians look the way they do without any help from Botox. Kendall Jenner is being called desperate by people everywhere on the internet because they think she is now copying Bianca Sansori. There have been rumors about Kim copying Bianca style, but now people are catching up to the fact that Kendall is also jumping on the bandwagon. I'm actually pissed at you. That's so annoying. Before I get into this, and we will dive in, I want you to know that the Kardashians are known for being accused of copying people. More specifically, Kim and Kylie, but all of the girls have been accused of it. Kylie had massive scandals, copying lesser known makeup artists, being as bold as to literally use Vlada Haggerty's art as her own. Vlada actually filed a lawsuit because of this. Her good friend Madison Beer even called her out online for taking an idea that wasn't hers. Heck, the Kardashian sisters even copy each other. Kim and Courtney had it out on TV because Courtney was copying Kim's wedding idea. Don't ever come at me like that. You don't, I swear stop. to God, I'll punch you in your face. So do it. These are just a few small examples, but if you look into this, there are so many instances of this family copying other celebrities and taking ideas from smaller brands. Leroy Kenton is a Kardashian expert, and in his words, he said, Kim and Courtney have had a sibling rivalry for years, but it's mostly Kim against Courtney because Courtney doesn't care to compete with Kim. But Kim, always wants to one-up Courtney, so it's not surprising to hear news about Kim stealing Courtney's ideas and not thinking it's a big deal. Even Chloe and her clothing company, Good American, had been sued by Los Angeles-based company 
Deep Blue Dazzled, who are seeking $10 million damages after accusing Chloe of ripping off their bedazzled bodysuit designs. When it comes to the specific outfit that Kendall was being called out on, she was seen posing to the side as she stood in front of a large fan placed in the middle of a parking lot garage. She had her long brunette hair blowing in the wind as she posed in a tiny black dress. The garment featured one thin strap under her chest, which led Kendall to flaunt plenty of side chest to the camera. It also featured a high neck design that held her chest in place. Guys, this is so similar to something Bianca wore and fans were fast to call Kendall out on it. While Kendall gave no caption in the post, she tagged designer brand Gucci over the shot. Kendall, who recently reunited with her boyfriend, Bad Bunny, has been showing off her body on social media so much lately. She also shared an image of herself lying face down on Sun Lounger, wearing only a green baseball cap and nothing else. She appeared to be completely unclothed as she showed off her backside while scrolling on her phone. As Kendall has become a bit more daring with her posts, some of her recent looks have started to mimic those of Bianca Sensori. Bianca, who married Kanye, the ex-husband of Kendall's sister, Kim Kardashian, in December 2022. It hasn't been just Kendall, however. Other stars like Kim Kardashian, Kristen Stewart, Katy Perry, Hailey Bieber, all of them have appeared to copy Bianca as well. And Bianca received such backlash over the past year for her barely there outfits. But negative or positive attention, some people really believe that they're the same thing. So it makes sense why celebrities would start copying Bianca's strategy. She's gotten so much attention from dressing the way she does. Almost all of it is negative, but she's made a name for herself regardless. Kim K has been in the business for a while, and people may not know everything about her, despite a whole show being made on her life. There are still some facts you may or may not know. Let's dive into some of them. These are some surprising facts about Kim Kardashian. To me, I thought, oh my god, that's when we're getting along the best. But then that is sad to me. Here's a fact for those completely oblivious to her. If you're studying for a Kim K test soon, this one's for you. Kim Kardashian is currently the mother of four children. Psalm, Saint, Chicago, and North. Her marriage to and relationship with her former boyfriend, Kanye West, was the cause of all of them. Northwest was the first, known for her vibrant personality and constant media attention from her birth. <laughs> Kim's second kid, Saint, has avoided the spotlight and been somewhat more reserved than his older sister. Third in line is Chicago, or Chi as we all know her. Due to health issues Kim had with her prior pregnancies, the model's second daughter and Psalm, the Kardashian West family's youngest son, were both conceived through surrogacy. Another fact is that she wore a vintage Marilyn Monroe dress to the Met Gala. Kim Kardashian has been a regular at the Met Gala, but following the 2022 event, her appearance attracted a lot of attention, along with sparking numerous debates and arguments regarding her gown. Kim came up with the idea last September that she wanted to wear Marilyn Monroe's dress. That year's theme was In America, an anthology of fashion, and Kimmy donned a frock that had formerly been owned by Marilyn Monroe. The item is Marilyn's Happy Birthday Mr. President outfit from Jean Louis, which she donned when she sang the song to President Kennedy back in the day. The businesswoman realized a lifelong ambition and went above and beyond to obtain the original design from the museum, Ripley's Believe It or Not, where the garment was briefly on exhibit. Once she ascended the stairs of the Metropolitan, she morphed into an exact duplicate. Do you know her history with Paris Hilton? Kim Kardashian's early friendship and stylist relationship with Paris Hilton gave her a platform to get into the public eye and ultimately paved the road for her own success and notoriety in the entertainment and commercial sectors. Very nice, very nice. Many people were unaware of her involvement in the fashion industry, but she has helped a number of well-known celebrities dress, including Lindsay Lohan. She also served as Paris's personal assistant in the early years of her career and had an appearance on the reality show The Simple Life. Here's a simple one. Her empire may have started small, but she's made a name for herself through her brands. Kim K's fragrance and cosmetics lines, KKW Fragrance and KKW Beauty, are essential components to her commercial empire and showcase her love of fashion and beauty. Kim's status as a leading figure in entertainment and beauty has been further cemented by the industry's increased awareness and appeal of these businesses. She is one of the most well-respected people in the industry because of the creativity and excellence of her products. Unquestionably, each of her brands has significantly and favorably impacted the industry, particularly the market for luxury and celebrity products, not to mention skims. 
Do you know what movie she started her acting career in? Throughout her career, Kim Kardashian has dabbled in acting for both television and movies. She has worked on a number of projects and made cameos in television shows and motion pictures, despite not focusing solely on acting. In 2008, she made her screen debut in the comedy Disaster Movie. She made a cameo appearance in which she played a humorous part and was trailed by photographers before running into a cosmic tragedy. Next, how many marriages has she been in? Kim has been married three times. She first said I do to music producer Damon Thomas in 2000 when she was barely 19 years old, but the two eventually got divorced in 2004. After then, she wed professional basketball player Chris Humphreys. Their marriage barely lasted 72 days after their much publicized wedding, which ended in divorce in 2013. In 2014, she tied the knot for the third and last time with the rapper and music producer Kanye West. Their marriage was widely reported and the couple had children together. However, the businesswoman and model filed for divorce from Ye in 2021, ending a chapter in her life after a number of scandals, some unpleasant moments, and years of marriage. She hasn't remarried after then, but she has been in other relationships. Oh, and she's also attended the Met Gala so many times, she's one of the most common guests. Kim Kardashian is well known for attending the Met Gala, one of the most significant occasions in the fashion industry on a regular and noticeable basis. Kimmy has made a name for herself as one of the celebrities who has attended the most events as of 2024, having done so 11 times. She has taken part both by herself and with Kanye West, her former partner, Thierry Mugler's form-fitting crystal dress from the 2019 Met Gala, and Givenchy's flower-covered dress from the 2013 Met Gala are two of her most iconic outfits. Want to know about her properties? In order to safeguard her money and way of life, Kim Kardashian has made large investments in luxury real estate as part of her financial portfolio. Her real estate holdings serve as both strategic assets in her company strategy and a reflection of her taste in luxury and style. Over the years, she has owned other residences in Los Angeles in addition to her mansion in Hidden Hills. She has made investments in pricey houses and condominiums in posh neighborhoods of the city. She has often demonstrated her exceptional taste by moving houses and even building her own home. This next one shocked me, but it proves that there's substance to Kim K beyond fillers and fashion. Kim Kardashian has developed into a fervent supporter of criminal justice reform in the US, devoting her time to improving the criminal justice system and pushing for the release of people who are wrongfully imprisoned. The entrepreneur has fought for justice for people impacted by an unfair criminal justice system by using her resources, reputation, and power to advance criminal justice reform. Her dedication to this cause has aided in increasing awareness of the nation's problems. Did you know her ex used to style her? Kim Kardashian's style has been greatly and persistently affected by Kanye West, who has assisted her in developing a more sophisticated and contemporary look. Their partnership has helped her business ventures in the fashion industry succeed, in addition to solidifying her reputation as a style icon. She has been introduced to new color palettes and textures by the rapper and fashion aficionado, who runs his own line called Yeezy, encouraging a more chic and modern approach to her clothing. Throughout her career, he has also been in charge of some of her most recognizable looks. You may think the Kardashians are pretty open about their lives since they have a whole reality TV show about it, but even still, there are things they need to hide. These are things the Kardashians wanted to hide from the world. The way Chris handled her daughters was one startling thing. According to Cosmopolitan, Ellen Pearson Kardashian sold pages from her husband Robert Kardashian Sr.'s personal journal following his passing. That notebook and Pearson claimed that when Chloe and Kim were young girls, Chris Jenner mistreated them. Furthermore, it is said that Chris was always eager to take advantage of her kids in order to get money while they were young. And some people even think this attitude persisted into the girl's maturity. I'm your momager, manager, mother, uh, it, name a title. Pearson stated that the extent of Kim's punishment included both physical and mental, as well as persistent teasing over Chloe's weight. Naturally, Chris claimed that these allegations actually never happened, and it appears that the only supporting documentation available is what Pearson and Kardashian Sr.'s notebooks say. Regardless of the veracity of the allegations, Chris will stop at nothing to grow her family's substantial and powerful enterprise. Kim didn't lose her earrings on vacation, apparently. The Kardashian family is well known for taking lavish trips and experiences. One particularly special trip to Bora Bora was featured on Keeping Up With The Kardashians. Kim allegedly misplaces her diamond earrings when she was there. Oh my god, I'm gonna cry, my diamond earrings! <laughs> 
which prompted the entire family to look for her priceless jewelry in the ocean. Of course, the loss of something so valuable and significant attracted a large audience and generated a tremendous deal of internet conversation about the occurrence. The issue, Chris Humphreys, Kim's ex-husband, allegedly claimed it never happened on RadarOnline.com. Kim didn't really lose her earring. The whole thing was staged to garner attention. Even if there were other occasions when Keeping Up With The Kardashians staged a fake event, the missing earrings serve as a perfect illustration of how unrealistic the reality TV show really is. It also demonstrates to viewers that they should withhold pity and judgment when anything happens on the show, since it can be staged to gain attention. Apparently, they also aren't great employers. There have been rumors circulating that when Keeping Up With The Kardashians originally aired in 2007, the family, particularly the children, was incredibly gracious to the film team. But as the show went on and the family became more well known, their respect and friendliness towards the crews they collaborated with decreased, leading to awkward and uncomfortable situations behind the scenes. The Sun claims that the Kardashians constantly chastise staff personnel and place impractical demands on everyone who gets in their way. In order to present themselves in the best possible light on the show, the girls often attempt to control what happens or insist on numerous reshoots of straightforward scenes, often at the expense of the other members of the family and crew. Another interesting allegation is that Kim's previous marriage with Chris Humphreys was for ratings. Kim's incredibly brief marriage to Chris Humphreys was one of the most talked about Keeping Up With The Kardashians occurrences. The union lasted for fewer than three months, and in the month that followed, it made headlines. Humphreys apparently felt deceived by Kim and thought the marriage was only for show, as the entire setting was unpleasant. Do you think you owe him an apology? Absolutely. The Washington Post claims that raising publicity and viewership for the Kardashian family show is precisely what the marriage was intended to accomplish. Kim actually requested that she bid Humphreys farewell on the program, but the producers turned her down. Humphreys has requested to be left off of keeping up with the Kardashians entirely and no longer wants anything to do with the family. Chris Humphreys' proposal was apparently reshot multiple times. The relationship between Chris Humphreys and Kim Kardashian was one of the most talked about keeping up with the Kardashians' moments. People were eager to hear about Humphreys' proposal to Kim, so it makes sense. Even though a lot of people now believe the couple's relationship was staged to boost ratings, many viewers were also captivated by their upcoming engagement at the time. Everything went off without a hitch at the appointed time, and it seems that the family was happy with it as well. According to Huffington Post, a producer acknowledged that the proposal was made more than once so that the camera team could take many shots to try and acquire the best perspectives for the show. Some even said Kim was involved in arranging the lighting and location to obtain the personal perspectives she desired. Kim's tapes may have been leaked by her mom. The disclosure of Kim's private video with Ray J is undoubtedly one of the most contentious events in the Kardashian narrative. Did you feel betrayed by it? I felt humiliated. Kim sued the corporation to keep the tape private at the time of its initial disclosure. Many, however, brought up Kim's impressive $5 million profit from the home video, so it's plausible that the leak was done for publicity purposes. Ray J claims that Kim's mother, Chris, was the one who actually made the footage public. Many think Chris's release was intended to draw attention to the family, and it was a very successful strategy. The first season of Keeping Up With The Kardashians debuted to a robust viewership just six months after the footage was leaked. In response, Chris claimed claims that she had nothing to do with the leak during a lie detector test on the Late Late Show with James Corden. How about this one? Kanye may have bought his house just to get away from the Kardashians. Many people anticipated that popular hip-hop artist Kanye West would be a regular on Keeping Up With The Kardashians after his marriage to Kim, but Kanye knew that his newfound fame would not come at the expense of Kris Jenner creating plans for him and his family, plans that Kanye would surely detest, in an attempt to capitalize on their marriage. Reportedly, in in an attempt to stay away from the show and Chris's influence, Kanye bought a house in Bel Air for himself, Kim, and their future family. It's interesting to note that being the first to reveal details about their family, Kanye essentially stole Kim's limelight. According to a story by Us Weekly, Kim stated that she didn't want Kanye to live in Wyoming, far away from everything after their divorce. 
Chris may have tried to bribe the press. The Kardashians built a prosperous enterprise on their family name. The Kardashian ladies are adept at promoting their brands and living through everything from their show to clothing lines to smartphone apps. Naturally, success like this inspires new ideas, and Chris's launch of her own talk show was one among them. Chris was terribly disappointed by the minimal viewership and unfavorable ratings her show received. According to the New York Post, Chris was not deterred by the negative evaluations and decided to compensate for a better review in order to make amends. According to some accounts, Chris mailed a $325 Tiffany pen to a New York Post reporter who had given the show a low review. The writer took offense at the short note attached to the pen, which asked for a better review the next time and ignored it. The house shown as establishing shots in the show isn't actually Chris's house. Many fans may be unaware that the house exterior on Keeping Up With The Kardashians isn't Chris Jenner's. Even though it never appears on screen for an extended period of time, the house on the show is around 20 miles away from her own residence. The aforementioned property serves as a prop that gives the Kardashian family a charming looking place to live. Actually, the house from Keeping Up With The Kardashians has been in other television series, such as True Blood and American Horror story. When the house went out for sale, this truth became quite apparent, and Jenner wasn't the one selling it. Northwest might be living the largest out of her siblings. Northwest's parents provided her with an opulent lifestyle, even though they never allowed her to have as much screen time as they did. Her room decor and wardrobe were all designer made and of the highest caliber. It has been disclosed that Kanye and Kim alone spent more than $1 million for North's nursery. Everything was specially ordered from world-class designers and produced to order. West and her siblings continued to enjoy opulent toys and clothes from their early days of affluence and Kim was always happy to post about them on social media. In 2022, Kim reportedly even hired a Grammy-winning pianist to visit their home daily to wake her children up with Christmas music, according to Yahoo. Honestly, it was only a matter of time. Let's see how Kylie Jenner just made fun of poor people and why people are angry. It takes so much work. You have to always keep people interested. As rumors of financial difficulties persist, Kylie Jenner is purportedly growing frantic to start new business ventures, yet her most recent Sprinter campaign photographs fell flat. Fans took offense at the reality star's attempt to be grounded, even though they thought she was attempting to glamorize poverty. Kylie recently released some photos from her most recent photo shoot on Instagram. So what was the actual photo shoot like? The reality star gave the photo shoot a hint of retro elegance by wearing a silver metallic undershirt underneath a sleeveless white tank bodysuit and styling her dark hair with jumbo curlers. Kylie crossed her knees and knelt by an open box full of sprinter cans. Kylie, projecting an easygoing, carefree aura, held a can to her neck while a fan blasted air in her direction. All I need for the weekend, she wrote as the picture's caption. Kylie's latest foiree into the beverage market was the March release of her own canned vodka drink. In an internet forum, some users criticized the star's advertising campaign, despite its visual appeal, criticizing the graphics employed in the promotion. One commenter remarked, I don't understand the art direction for her recent campaigns. This ad could be a woman be at a park with her children instead of cosplaying poor, another critic wrote. Kylie's Sprinter brand has had a difficult beginning, to say the least. It's hard. When Kylie announced the launch of Sprinter in March, her fans were not overly excited about the prospect of yet another product launch, and she encountered a wave of skepticism from them. One fan said, frankly, literally not buying stuff else from you, girl. Lol. Some expressed disapproval of the flavors, saying boring flavors for real. While some questioned the product's safety and desirability, asking who would even risk buying this stuff. In addition to the overall dislike of Kylie's new endeavor, people conjectured that her entry into the beverage industry puts her in direct competition with her sister, Kendall Jenner. Just always wanted to share more with my fans. I just didn't know how. Critics of the star's marketing campaign attacked the images in an online forum. This would have been 10 times better by a pool with cute umbrellas, one ranted. Is there art direction here? I would never assume she's trying to sell me an alcoholic beverage here. Another slammed. The photo shoots for her brands never get the vibe 100% down somehow, a third critic blasted. But was she copying someone else the whole time? When Kendall debuted her own beverage line, 818 Tequila in 2021, onlookers noticed the competition between the siblings. She always copied her sister's ideas. First, she copied KHY from Skims, 
and now it's Sprinter from Kendall, said one individual. Apart from Sprinter, Kylie has been quite busy lately, introducing her apparel line KHY and her debut perfume Cosmic from her cosmetics line. The hypothesis put forth by TikToker at Michelle Talk earlier this year explains the rise in Kylie's endorsement deals and business endeavors. I think that these celebrities are not as wealthy as we think they are, especially Kylie Jenner. Not that Kylie Jenner is struggling or anything, Michelle said in the clip. Not that Kylie Jenner is struggling or anything, I don't think she is close to being homeless, but I think that she lives well beyond her means, and that is why she has a new business venture every two to five days. The social media star went on. She needs money to upkeep her lifestyle. Kylie hasn't addressed rumors that she finds it difficult to support her way of life as of yet. A little different than my personality, but not too far off. So I believe everyone should go to therapy. It gives you a new perspective. Kim, on the other hand, I'm not sure she'll agree. Let's see why Kimmy doesn't like therapy. It is. It is a different language. The reality star Kim Kardashian said that she had never attended therapy previously, attributing her lack of experience to her wonderful pals. On this week's episode of The Kardashians, the businesswoman was celebrating her 43rd birthday at Funk in Santa Monica with her closest ride or die friends, which includes a group she referred to as the Lifers. She gave an update on her law school experience before revealing during a confession that her buddies are the true reason she's still here. Speaking on her crazy week, Kim made an unexpected comment. So tonight, I just want to celebrate with my girls, and I think all of us just need that sometimes. You know, it should be a really fun experience. This week in particular has been complete chaos. Kim says in confession as she's seen at the party greeting cousin CC Bussy. But honestly, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for my friends. Like, I have the best friends, and they're super supportive. I think that's probably why I've never seen a therapist. It's because I have the best friends in the entire world, and they mean everything to me," Kim adds in confession. Back at the celebration, Kim adds, my camera does not know who all the lifers are, as she poses with her group of pals who are referred to as the lifers earlier in the episode. Because this was just, I think, believable. The six women are Simone Harouche, Lindsay May, Ashley Cranes, Sarah Meyer Michelson, and Allison Statter, as well as Zoe Winkler, Henry Winkler's daughter, who was spotted earlier. At the party, Kim confesses to the camera, these are officially the lifers that I talk about all the time. I always say I hit the jackpot in the friends department, she continues. She is shown with her cousin Cece Bussy and friend Shelly Azoff. Spending my 43rd birthday with all the girls who inspire me and motivate me is just really special, she says. I love that. They all take seats at various tables, and it is evident from there that each one has a unique Kim mask with a unique appearance. When they're all seated, Chris proposes a toast, stating, I just want to thank everybody for coming tonight to celebrate Kim, her 43rd year on this planet. I fell in love with you the moment we met, and I have been obsessed with you ever since. I just want to say that it's such a special night when you can look at all of these beautiful faces and see all of your old friends and new friends, as Kim says she wants to chime in. I'm not done yet, Chris insists, continuing, it means so much to Kim that you guys are here, and I love you all, and thank you for coming. At Chloe cries at Kim to get up and show off that body. She does so and continues, saying, so all of you here whether you're my lifers that I've known for my whole life, you're all my ride or dies. I trust all of you. Kim is just getting started when Chloe interrupts her. At least everyone here has known one crazy secret about me and it's never gotten out, as Kimora Lee Simmons says, and vice versa. As the group cheers, Kim continues, so this is the group, and here's to another year of keeping my secrets. What is my wish for myself this year? Kim asks the sibling as they gather for the sister photo. I think I have everything I could possibly want to need. I think I've gotten there and that I have a feeling like I know what's really important in life. I know that being present in the moment is everything. Kim says in confession as they take the group pick, as the episode comes to a close, Kim confesses and there's no place I'd rather be tonight. The Kardashians are no longer ruling the media. Their popularity is coming to an end. The Kardashians are in their flop era. More people care less and less about what's going on with them. And we're in a time where the Kardashians lives are so boring that they're not even worth talking about. There is a lot of negative hate and energy towards my family. It's almost impossible to fathom. How did we get here? This is according to fans, so please don't hate the messenger. If you ever look at the internet, you'll learn that we may, indeed, be moving into a new timeline entirely. The era of the flop Dashian. Or maybe it's something even worse than that. We may have hit the point where the Kardashians aren't even worth talking about. For 15 years, cultural critics have proclaimed that the Kardashian family, Kim, her four sisters, her mother Chris, 
were everywhere. Their hit show, Keeping Up With The Kardashians, ran for 20 seasons. Would you want to keep going and everybody commit, or would you want to kind of put the show on a back burner? They appeared at fashion weeks, Met Galas, on Saturday Night Live talk shows, in magazines, and advertisements. Their personal dramas were contorted into TV plot lines, and much as they were news fodder, especially the ups and downs of their marriages, Kim even met with President Trump at the White House. We're gonna continue. These next points, they're crazy. And as ridiculous as the Kardashian obsession has always been, it was for a long time exciting. More than that, it was super interesting. Their literal existence is their primary product. Kim's got skims, Kylie's got makeup and canned vodka spritzer, Kendall's got tequila, and chloe has got her migraine medication line. But what the Kardashian-Jenner clan had most of all was their glamorous lifestyle, their hot selfies, and their awesome fashion. From juicy reality shows to vampy makeup collabs, this family knows how to make that money, honey. Viewers, critics, and even reluctant fans have been trying to figure out the fascination for years, often through similar headlined think pieces. In 2021, LA Mag dug into the question how the Kardashians took over the world. Back in 2019, the New York Times described the sisters as a media company that swallowed a makeup empire, merged with a fashion line, and gave birth to athleisure trends. People think they have us all figured out, but things are not always how they seem. Rolling Stone called them the egos that ate America way back in 2014. The common theme? These ladies are everywhere and there's no escaping them. Or at least they were. We're gonna get into more of this. The Kardashian buzz started to die down after that LA Meg piece coinciding with the end of Keeping Up With The Kardashians. With their flagship show wrapping up, these women had to focus on their individual products. Sounds easy enough, right? Well, considering they've managed to pump out five seasons of their Hulu sequel series in just three years, maybe not so much, the Kardashians premiered to lukewarm reactions, partly because the sisters themselves seemed less enthusiastic about continuing. As a result, the internet keeps declaring that Kardashian era is officially over. Sales of Kylie Cosmetics, which controversially landed the youngest Jenner on the Forbes billionaire list, have been declining year after year since their late 2010s peak. Her swimwear line quietly fizzled out, and her new fashion brand Kai is similarly not doing well. Right now, Kylie is best known for her relationship with Timothy Chalamet, which has actually sparked some backlash. Chloe's inclusive clothing line, Good America, whose jeans I've heard are very good, is doing well for itself. Kendall's tequila brand is also doing well. But Kim was at the Tom Brady's roast and she was booed heavily. Apparently her family pressured Netflix, which hosted the event live, to remove the boos from its recording several days later. So fans are saying that the Kardashians are now boring because they aren't surrounded by as much drama. But if the family's relative silence, stability, and lack of drama means the Kardashians are flopping. Guys, the Kardashian nannies have recently spilled what it's like working for them and it's wild. Nannying for someone as rich and famous as Kim Kardashian may seem like a dream job, but actually it's serious business. This is more crazy than you'd expect. Have you ever wondered what chaos lurks behind those glamorous Instagram posts? Well, one insider is spilling all of the tea. We've got some nanny gossip hotter than a Kardashian selfie. One of the nannies spoke all about what it was like to work for them. So apparently, Kim spoils her kids and Courtney's demands are just straight up insane. I'm Although I don't think right it now. is. In the past, Kim criticized Courtney's parenting style, saying that Court can't even keep a nanny due to the bad behavior of her children. There was a source that actually backed this up, saying that Courtney goes through nannies pretty frequently. They said Courtney either fires the nannies or they get fed up with her children misbehaving and quit. The source also claimed that Courtney isn't a fan of rules, including bedtimes, and said her home is full of chaos most days. She said that Courtney's kids rule the house and Courtney's demands are insane. Well, I'm trying not to hurt you, baby. Thank you. She sent her on a trip way out of the way to a health food store to buy ingredients for an organic breakfast. The nanny also said that Courtney is living in her own world and doesn't care how ridiculous her demands are. In Courtney's words, she said, I find with my kids that coming from a more loving approach works best. Well, if that works for her, then good for her. When it comes to Kim, the nanny said that Kim gives her kids whatever they want, when they want. She said Kim absolutely spoils them. The nanny went on to say if one of them is into space, she'll look into taking them to NASA headquarters. She has the means to provide really cool things and they're good kids. That's pretty great. And if she has the means, why not? Her daughter North is a genius and absolutely hilarious. So whatever she's doing, it's clearly working. North tried to bite my nanny. So Kim pays her nannies $100,000 a year, but she does have some rules for her employees. She requires her staff to wear neutral hues to coordinate with her zen home decor. 
I mean, that's kind of like a uniform, right? People wear uniforms to work. The nanny also said that Kim works 14 to 16 hour days, so it means the nannies are at work for really long days. But isn't that the reason why people need a nanny? Obviously, if you're away at work for 14 to 16 hours, you're gonna need help. Long hours, yes, but that's what they're paid for. <laughs> Khloe Kardashian has always been my favorite Kardashian. She just seems like such a genuine and kind person. She has a very special relationship with her two sons, and apparently that also extends to her staff. Word is that she treats her staff like family and gives out massive bonuses around the holidays. And when her staff has to go away on holiday, she makes sure to book them the best hotel rooms. Chloe is so awesome that even if she does have helpers on deck, she still makes sure to put her kids to bed at night and get them ready in the morning. Apparently the only time she really takes for herself is when she goes to the gym. She really makes an active effort to spend time and take care of her family, even though her nannies could do that. But it makes total sense why the Kardashians would need nannies to help them manage. They all work an insane amount. They have an empire to take care of. They are always expanding and they have their own businesses on top of everything else that they do. Kris Jenner has 13 grandchildren and she said in the past that it's been difficult to spend time with all of them one-on-one. -on -one. She was quoted saying, I often say to myself that I really should be the kind of grandmother that takes my grandchildren to dinner like once a month. Like really get to know your grandchild and see what's happening in school and all this stuff. And I thought if I did that, it would take half a month just to go out to dinner with my grandkids. And I'm like, nope, not going to do that. They're not getting that out of me. She promised her grandson Mason that he, if he could stay out of trouble and stay away from alcohol and prove it with tests, she would buy him a car for his 16th birthday. She quickly realized that doing that 13 times could get quite expensive. Is the Kardashian curse real? And I would probably say you do have a curse. The Kardashians are no strangers to the whirlwind of controversy, criticism, and shadows of celebrity scandals. People who get involved with the Kardashian-Jenner family end up experiencing a serious run of bad luck. Constantly labeled for lacking talent, the famous family also bears the weight of what many perceive as a significant curse. The Kardashian-Jenner family is so successful, yet people who get close to them tend to get burned. The most famous man to fall victim th to the Kardashian curse is none other than Kanye West. He has been deemed unstable due to his many heated rants and raves. Kanye was hospitalized in 2016 for his own safety after sleep deprivation and dehydration got the better of him. Kanye West has been hospitalized after canceling the last 21 dates of his national tour. In 2020, Kim and her mother Chris reportedly tried to get Kanye to a doctor after he suffered from a bout of bipolar disorder during his run for presidency. Yep, he ran for president. America. What is America's destiny? And most recently, Kanye publicly shared his anti-Semitic beliefs, which further derailed his reputation and finances. After six years of marriage to the leader of the gang, Kim, it comes across as though Kanye has finally been hit by the spooky Kardashian curse. There's a rumor that the family carries an aura of misfortune, driving men into madness and ruin. Khloe Kardashian married basketball player Lamar Odom. However, even though they looked happy, things weren't as happy behind the scenes. At that point in my life, I knew it was right because I had women, bad ones. Yeah. Lamar tragically lost his cousin, and a week later, he was involved in a serious car accident, which left a 15-year-old boy deceased. Just a year later, partying and infidelity rumors swirled around his marriage to Khloe, and a year after that, Chloe filed for divorce. Chloe's ex-husband had a white powder-induced stroke at an adult activity house, which left him in a life-threatening coma. Thankfully, Lamar made it through, but it hasn't stopped people from saying he'd fallen prey to the Kardashian curse. I wasn't prepared, I wasn't married no more. Scott Disick had a publicized struggle with alcohol and illegal matters. He even checked into rehab to battle the problem, but it eventually led to his breakup with Courtney. At one point, Scott even believed the Kardashian curse was real. He was told by a psychic, the cards talk a lot of negative energy. Everything you try to do, you have a tendency to have many obstacles in front of you. To answer your question, I would probably say you do have a curse. Tristan Thompson's relationship with Chloe was running smoothly until they were struck with cheating scandals. The NBA player didn't just cheat once, but multiple times. The couple were the talk of the town. Once Kristen's first round of cheating took place, the affair was with Kylie Jenner's best friend, Jordan Woods. The scandal rocked the entertainment world more so as Chloe had been pregnant with Tristan's child at the time. After more rounds of makeups and breakups, the couple finally parted ways when everyone learned that Tristan had fathered a child to another woman while trying to reconcile with Chloe. Even though a lot of these actions are because of his own decisions, throughout his relationship with Chloe, Tristan's NBA team were performing very poorly, leading many to believe the Kardashian curse was to blame for their losing streak. At the time of this report, Tristan is also suspended from the NBA for 25 games for using illegal materials. Tyga was in a relationship with Kylie Jenner for three years. It's not too much of a reach that we're including him in this list. Following his split with Kylie, Tyga's career went downhill. 
with several of his singles being deemed a flop. He was also under media scrutiny for bailing out on car payments and rent and being involved in serious lawsuits. Chris Humphreys is another that was said to be hit by the Kardashian curse. Chris's reputation has been tarnished since leaving the family. People no longer recognize him as a renowned basketball player, but instead as the villain who was married to Kim Kardashian for just 72 days. Reggie Bush was Kim's boyfriend for three years and even made regular appearances on Keeping Up With The Kardashians during its early days. The athlete was a celebrated footballer, but following his split from Kim, he lost momentum in his skill and was unfortunately dubbed the biggest overhyped flop ever in professional football. He retired soon after.